And we got the quad box today. Shout out Scott Hansen, NFL Network. We're bringing in our friend, David Eichold, Hawkeyes insider. And uh, boys, anything happening today in the world of college football? How about Caden Proctor, the number one offensive tackle, number two player in the transfer portal? Well, long story here. So let me set the stage of what we're getting ready to get into. And in case you've been sleeping under a rock, it's been a roller coaster for Caden Proctor. Let's go back to his high school days where he was a product out of the state of Iowa. Commits to the Iowa Hawkeyes June 30th, 2022. Takes an official visit to Alabama December 16th. Decommits the day before signing day. Flips to the Crimson Tide. Starts all 14 games as a true freshman at the left tackle position. And then on January 17th, to the shock of many, enters the transfer portal after Nick Saban retires. Commits to the Hawkeyes three days later. And now here we are. Iowa Hawkeyes, they start spring practice today, and on Tuesday this week, Caden Proctor makes his intentions known that he plans to enroll back in Tuscaloosa with the Alabama Crimson Tide. Don't underestimate a good spring break, David Eichold. Uh, David, you shot me a DM about 15 minutes before we went on the show. You said, hey, I got some good context on this. And I said, hey, you know what? We're, we're going to make a last-minute change and bring in our boy. But, David, like I said, I just kind of threw the timeline out there. It's been a roller coaster of events. Tell us what you know about this situation and how Caden Proctor arrived here. First of all, what a thousand IQ play by Caden Proctor to get a front row seat to the Caitlin Clark show for a couple months and then go back to Tuscaloosa, <laughs> right? Uh, but no, this has been a very, very interesting saga to follow because, you know, think back to even a month ago. This is something where, you know, Caden Proctor was in winter workouts. He was making friends with his teammates, reuniting with his old former buddy, Xavier Wampa, who's currently a starting safety at Iowa. And then, you know, he goes on spring break with his boys from Alabama. Good times are had, I'm sure. And they say, you know what? Why don't you come back to Alabama? And I think after thinking upon that, Kane Proctor got back to the University of Iowa. And again, this is not something that has built up. This was an absolute sudden change to where what I was told yesterday morning was Kane Proctor did not go to the team workout. He did not attend the team meeting last night. He went to Kirk Ferentz's office and made it known that he was going to leave the University of Iowa's program. And then I got told from two separate sources that the Crimson Tide is where he's going. And then obviously came Proctor posted last night on his Instagram story, the Michael Jordan, I'm back. I would say leaving no doubt, but you guys know as well as I do. When that portal opens, everybody's going to be calling his phone unless he has a do not contact order. So crazy, crazy saga. And I'll tell you, this is not something the Iowa staff and obviously the team are very happy about considering a lot of his friends from the state of Iowa happened to play for the University of Iowa football team and were really pushing for the team to welcome him back after he spurned him on last signing day. So what's the what's response been from Iowa just in terms of Kirk Ferentz and what you've heard? Because I think a lot of people assume that, you know, Iowa's going to put their best foot forward over the next couple of weeks. Obviously, the portal window opens on April 15th. Uh, so they have a little bit of time to try to swoon Caden Proctor back. But, yeah, I mean, you have to think, if you're Iowa, it, does that even make sense at this point? No, I, I think the bridges have, have been burnt. I don't think there's any more need to put any more resources with Caden Proctor. Iowa will return Connor Colby. They'll return Mason Richmond. They'll return Logan Jones. I mean, they have pieces. Now, granted, the offensive line struggled last season, but there is belief that they can take a step forward with, you know, Tim Wester, new offensive coordinator, changing up the scheme a little bit, being a little bit, you know, quote unquote, more unpredictable on offense, which would be a huge change in the Kirk Ferentz mantra. But I do think that, yes, Cam Proctor is incredibly talented. He's got day one potential in the NFL draft. But given all of the context, all of the drama, I think Kirk Ferentz just wants to be done with it. Maybe they explore the NCAA transfer portal for depth, but Th this one's absolutely done. I do not see them reaching back out to Cam Proctor to try to change his mind. What's your What's your read on it, just from your personal opinion? Because you know, Caden Proctor, we mentioned he's a, he's an Iowa native, right? One of the most highly touted players that has come out of the state of Iowa in quite some time. Obviously, had the recruitment, like I said, uh, was committed to Iowa, flipped on signing day. Your your just overall feel on how everything has played out through your lens. It's been interesting, and I think it gets even more interesting when you introduce the NIL concept because obviously the collective had a huge boost in, in subscriptions and donations when Proctor entered the portal. Iowa's Swarm Collective raised about $100,000 in two days, and right when Proctor decided to go back into the portal and go back to Alabama, there was a lot of fans you know, in the Iowa fan base that said, you know what, why am I going to donate to this again? 
if, if he can take my money and not even suit up a snap. But from what I've been told from the Iowa's collective is they, he did not get one dime from the people's actual donations. He got a little bit of a cut from a couple of corporate sponsorships when, you know, we shot a commercial or he quote unquote did some work for them. So that's a little bit of misinformation that's out there, but there was about a 24 hour span yesterday where Iowa fans were incredibly upset thinking that, you know, Kane Proctor could have walked away with a hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars after just watching Caitlin Clark on the sidelines for two months. Right. And maybe going to a couple of winter workouts and classes. So, you know, I think it's been dramatic. I think it's finally good that this chapter has come to an end. I think Kirk Ferentz more than anybody is happy to put this behind him because longest tenured head coach with all the changes in college football, this is not your father's college football. This isn't even my college football from <laughs> you know, I grew up on, right? All of a sudden changes. So it's going to be very interesting to hear Kirk Ferentz's response when we're, we ask him next Tuesday during the opening spring practice and the opening press conference. But just a giant cluster. Maybe it made too much sense for him to come back to Iowa, but uh, this is definitely going to be a wild spring portal period if this is going to become the new norm. Do you? Well, yeah, go ahead, Drew. Well, Dave, I, I was going to bring this up. Like, this doesn't feel like something Iowa would ever be involved with. Like, if you follow them on the recruiting trail, you know the type of prospects and the recruitments they get involved in. Like. This, yeah. this, 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 this is in Iowa, right? Like they're not even really involved in the transfer portal. I mean, how much did they invest? Not from like a monetary standpoint, but time-wise, into Caden Proctor. I, there's a great tweet that's out there from some fan. It's like Caden Proctor at Iowa: two commitments, two decommitments, zero practices, <laughs> zero games, one NCAA violation. Like I, I remember talking to him at some point, and he said this was before his senior year he had stopped doing the photo shoots on visits because he had been to Iowa so many times. Like, you know, how long of a chat book is this thing? Yeah, I think that's the craziest part about it. And you're exactly right. I mean, even when Caden Proctor, you know, the rumors that he was going to enter the portal to go back to Iowa in the first place, I was a little bit surprised that Kirk Ferentz and them reached out. Now, if you have a five-star prospect, the number one prospect in the state of Iowa history, that probably had a little bit of something to do with it. Those uh, six foot eight, 360 pounders don't exactly uh, <laughs> grow on trees, right? So I think his talent had something to do with it. I believe they offered Kane Proctor when he was 14 to 15 years old. This has been a long standing relationship. Obviously, we know about the self reported, I believe, level three violation about the text message that was sent to him. I think it was after his second career start that said essentially, keep your head up. But right when Kane Proctor entered the portal, I mean, it was a no doubt that he was going to come to the University of Iowa. But again, Iowa had to lay out an NIL plan for him because he's that type of talent. Kane Proctor won number 74, a highly touted Trevor Lauk, who's probably going to play a big part in Iowa's offense line over the next couple of years. Switch numbers for him. Kane Proctor has been on Iowa's official roster. I think he was on there for about 12 hours before he decided that he wasn't going to come back for spring practice. So as far as resources, I think there was a lot more resources in play when it came to the actual recruiting process. But again, you're exactly right. Usually when a guy decommits from Iowa, Kirk Ferentz, them say, you know what, that's fine, but we're going to wipe our hands clean. We, we just, we don't want to deal with it. We're going to go on to the next prospect. We want guys that want us, but given Proctor's stature, given his accolades, given his upside and his talent, there's no doubt that this is going to sting a little bit more. But as far as the resources goes, I, I'm very intrigued right now because they still have to get rid of a couple scholarships or convert some guys to walk-ons uh, if they want to explore the transfer portal. And there's no doubt that there's going to be a giant hole at left tackle and a lot of questions now that Tim Wester has to answer that he did not think he was going to have to answer just a couple of days ago. It's an impossible situation. I don't think people really understand that. Now, you know, Iowa thinks that they have a all-conference potential All-American, uh, one of the best tackles in terms of uh, in terms of the progression of the position with Caden Proctor. Now they have to go back to the drawing board and what could be a limited market, not to mention a completely oversaturated market, right? If, mm -hmm. if a priority tackle hits the portal, it's going to be a very competitive market. Uh, David, you and I were talking before we jumped on. Kirk Ferentz is 68. And, you know, you think about Nick Saban, and I think a lot has been said about some of the reasons why he decided to retire when he retired. You know, I'm not trying to speculate on that. You think that, you know, he's got a couple of good years left ahead of him. An event like this, it, it can kind of rock the boat a little bit. I mean, what do you think he's thinking right now in the midst of 
dealing with this Caden Proctor situation. And it, and it hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows over the last couple of years either. I was going to say a lot of words that I probably can't repeat on the airwaves. That's probably exactly what he's thinking right now. But I do think going back to the core of Kirk Ferentz and what he always tells, at least the media and behind closed doors, is the fact that he loves coaching football. He likes the actual football aspect. And I know that's been a big reason why he's still coaching today. I mean, his spring football period, the fall camp period, he says – are his favorite times of the year because you don't have to game plan. You don't have to go out scouting. You get to focus on the guys that are in the locker room and personal development. And that's what really keeps him going day by day. So I think this is something that's going to sting, but I'm very intrigued about if this spring process and going through spring practice, I don't want to say reignites the fire, but just keep pours a little bit more gasoline to keep it burning a little bit brighter. But I'm kind of with you at this point. I'm kind of year by year speculating until Kirk Ferentz decides to hang it up. I think this year is going to be a very interesting year from this standpoint. Iowa returns nine of their 11 star defensive stars are, I would argue, the best defense in college football, at least top three. Sebastian Castro, Jay Higgins, Nick Jackson, who is probably as old as I am, and Jordan Bohannon at this point, uh, continuing to play in his sixth year of college football. Iowa's got a good special teams. Their offense is going through kind of a giant turnover but there's a lot of optimism. So again, it's going to be a year by year speculating thing from me. I've been told he wants four to five years left, maybe coach the remainder of his contract. I was absolutely going to let him if he wants to, but I'll tell you the timeline is going to get very interesting here, especially after this season. I believe he's going to stay, but I know there are a lot of outsiders and there's a lot of people on the recruiting trail that have asked Kirk if he's going to continue to stick around. So it's going to be something I'm going to watch for. I'm not going to try to overreact yet. We'll kind of see as the season unfolds if he still has it. I wouldn't blame him one bit. You know, it kind of reminds me of Chris Peterson at Washington. I think everybody has yeah. it in mind. And, and you know, these guys feel like they can coach three to four years. It's not so much coaching. I think they feel that they can do that at a very high level for a very long time. It's everything else that comes with a job that makes you lose sleep at night. David Eichel, we appreciate you joining us, especially on such a short timeline. Guys, you can follow David Eichel at David Eichel on X, also one of the best in the business, doing it for us at the Hawkeyes Insider at 24-7 Sports. David, we appreciate you, man. Hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Well, what a loaded storyline, boys, and what a way to jump into it. Uh, Drew, I, you've had a morning. You were on cover three. We'll get your video back up here in a second. You're on cover three with Bud Elliott, Danny Cannell, uh, Chip Brown, and the boys uh, over there, Tom Fornelli as well. And, um, you know, Caden Proctor is certainly uh, the headline today in, in the college football news cycle. But, um, Drew, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tee it up for you. Obviously, we talked about the timeline. David gave some really good context on how Caden Proctor has now arrived at the, the decision to transfer back to Alabama. Just your, your, your thoughts on this in general. You can take it whatever way you want to go. So I think this is the one where uh, – the, the casual fans going to be like, all right, what, what, what exactly are we doing here? Um, and, and for me, like, I want to be clear, I'm all for player movement, right? NIL, all that stuff. I get it. Yes. I'm, I'm not against that. I just think this is a sign that we need some guardrails in place when it comes to player movement. Um, because look at Iowa, you know, I didn't realize they had such a big void at left tackle, but out of all the programs in college football, right? So 130, you know, there's probably five programs equipped to lose their left tackle the week before the start of, of spring practices and it not, you know, be decimating to the upcoming season. Um, you know, I, I keep saying it on this podcast and you do as well, Cooper, like we are getting closer and closer to an NFL model. Like let's, let's just call it what it is. High school recruiting is your NFL draft. Uh, the transfer portal is free agency. So let's think about an NFL team, right? They go out and they sign a, an elite offensive tackle. And then the day before training camp, he's like, yeah, I'm good, man. You know, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere else. And then Iowa doesn't get anything from this. There's no compensatory pick. I, I, I think that's what people need to understand here. Like this is crippling for Iowa in the sense of, you know, did players transfer out because Caden Proctor came in? Apparently they made some kid changes number because Caden Proctor showed up. I mean, I, to me, like, hopefully this is a sign to whoever is making the decisions that, all right, we need to get some structure. We need to get some, some guardrails in place because I think 
it's only going to lead. I, I think there's only going to be more of this, and it, it's going to lead to burnout with with college coaches. Like, if you are an Iowa coach right now, are you waking up this morning and being like, "What am I doing here?" You know, how are we supposed to build a roster if 365 days of the year someone can just pull this guy off my roster? So that's it. And then the final thing I got is like, if I was donating to the Iowa collective, I would also wake up this morning and be like, what am I doing? And I know David outlined that, you know, Caden didn't get any money, but I still think you're having that conversation on the inside. He might not have gotten any money. I think what was important about what David said, I think within 48 hours of hitting the portal, that Iowa collective raised over a hundred thousand dollars. Right. Um, which I think was a strong indication of where that money and those resources were being pulled. Um, Drew, I think everything you talked about, like you keep talking about college heading towards the NFL model, I think those are contractual obligations, right? As of right now, there's nothing to tie Caden Proctor to Iowa uh, to prevent him from leaving to go to Tuscaloosa. And I think that's probably more of the the frustrating thing. And, you know, I'm trying not to aim my frustration so much at Caden Proctor because he, he could be the first, but he's certainly not going to be the last of this case uh, with anything. Drew, I think we've kind of picked up on some scuttlebutt that there might be more of this in the near future with some names that might rock the boat more so than a guy like Caden Proctor. So uh, we'll see what happens there. I think it's a broken system. And I think the thing that's the most concerning, what you said, Andrew, is, well, those in charge need to fix it. Who's in charge? I don't I don't know. I'm just who, saying who someone's got to fix it. Who can enforce these rules? No, I'm with you 110%. But, you know, when I, I asked Bud Elliott this morning, we were on a call before he had to jump on his podcast, and I said, well, who's in charge of fixing it? Is it Congress? Is it legislation? Is it the NCAA? Is it Charlie Baker? You know, is, is it the SEC? Is it the Big Ten? Who's really going to be able to make these changes and, and impact changes? Because it seems like every time the governing body wants to get involved, they just get hit with an injunction and a countersuit, right? That seems to be like the popular thing to do. And I don't want to get too in the weeds because that's certainly not my forte. Um, but it is frustrating from a roster construction standpoint, like you said, where you feel like you have a top 10 player at the position in the country. And that's what you're going forward with in terms of, hey, we're going forward in the spring. We're starting spring practice tomorrow. And this is what I know I have versus the next day, poof, he's not there anymore. Right. And now we got to scramble and now we got to figure that out. And we got a portal that, that opens in three and a half weeks and it's going to be a limited market. Um, so that's extremely frustrating. The other thing, I talked to somebody close with this situation and the, the, I'm paraphrasing, but the quote here was sometimes I wonder why I do what I do. I felt that way three years ago when I was a director of player personnel. Now you add in NIL, the transfer portal, uh, the level of ambiguity in, rapid change and you you can't predict what comes tomorrow that is a very difficult thing to do to build a winning product and a sustainable product year over year so you know we keep talking about these things burnout coaches maybe looking towards the nfl these are the things that come into play when you have no idea what your position room is going to look like those are the things that make you wonder why am i doing what i'm what i'm doing and drew you said it iowa got left with what a level three violation, they probably lose some cachet in the locker room, looking like fools, giving Caden Proctor everything that he wanted. It's a hard thing to come back from. And now, you, you know, you got Kirk Ferentz, 68 years old. He's probably thinking to myself, what am I doing? What am I doing? And it's a very legitimate question. So, Tom, I feel bad. <laughs> 20 minutes in the show, you have not said a word. You're looking good over there. Um <laughs> <laughs> I thought his microphone wasn't working. Yeah, did we, did we cut you off? What, what's going on? Do you have an opinion on this? Yeah, I just I was just blown away by I mean by the situation. I'm sitting there at dinner last night with some friends, and I get a text. This is happening, and um, was just kind of like, what are we doing? And 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 what what's happening in college football? But um, then I see the reaction from the fan base, and I see a lot of a lot of Iowa fans kind of acting like like how I would be acting. They're just kind of over it. You know, this kid didn't pick him from the start. And then transfers there, picks them. Some people think it's NIL related and great. And obviously Nick Saban leaving played the biggest factor. Now all of a sudden they're going back. And instead of people having a meltdown from the fan base, I think they're just frustrated with the whole process. They're frustrated with um, Proctor. They're not really taking it out on Iowa or their lack of being able to keep this kid, get it done, which I kind of appreciated because I think this was completely out of Iowa's hands. 
Um, then I read I Cold Story, and it's it's going in depth about this this spring break trip that they're taking at Cade McNamara and all the offensive linemen are together, except for Caden Proctor, who's with Al his former teammates at Alabama. Um, so I'm seeing all that unfold, which is amazing. It's tremendous reporting from from David. Um, and then I'm seeing additional stuff on other, you know, other message boards on 24 seven sports and Twitter and things like that of people speculating, okay, well, Caleb Downs is next. Julian saying, is he going to stick all this kind of stuff? And it's just crazy the, the reaction to one person and how this is, you know, obviously, you know, Ivan's, you touched on this, like, hopefully this isn't going to be the future. And, and I, I too am all for player movement and finding the best fit for you and your future. But man, this, this, Poor Iowa. Um, definitely feel bad for them this late in the spring football. And um, it's just wild, the reaction and the speculation that comes from this. But it's going to be a crazy spring, and obviously it's not going to slow down anytime soon. You can say poor Iowa, and I, I get what you're saying. I'm yeah. not poking holes in that. But what what's preventing this from happening to well, whoever your favorite school is? Well, that's the thing. Like, that's what I was trying to get at. Like, Iowa would – is is never in this situation and how are they in it you know like they're kind of in a lose lose um we don't have to spend all day talking k to proctor two things do we have a location for that spring break trip do we know where Caden proctor was on not spring? yet must have been wild though <laughs> I, I was i was assuming somewhere in florida um second thing i think a lot of people are like okay well they can replace them via the transfer portal and i heard a fascinating stat yesterday if you look at the top 20 offensive tackles in the nfl okay the top 20 graded out guys all of them are either drafted or traded for none of them are free agent signees and again i keep saying we're going to an nfl model we keep saying that market is so limited for those offensive tackles and i went out, i look back at the 2023 transfer rate rankings for 24 7 sports those top offensive tackles yeah like the top four all ended up playing over 700 snaps and hitting but after that it's a bunch of did not play and got limited snaps at guard these bodies aren't out there so you know i, I just want to point that out on this position you know you can't just go and sign some free agent that's going to fill the hole last thing i will say we talked a lot about iowa this is huge for alabama i mean this guy started 14 games for him last year the other thing about that is you look at alabama's now uh, offensive line now left to right you got Tyler Booker, one of the best interior offensive linemen in the country. Parker Brailsford comes over from Washington, certainly uh, one of the most highly touted uh, freshmen in the country last year at the center position. Jaden Roberts at right guard. And now Elijah Pritchard, who was a five-star for us, been sitting on the bench for the last two years, primed and ready to go at right tackle. I mean, so I don't know what you want to call it. Give credit to Alabama. Give credit to Alabama's – players i guess uh for <laughs> getting caden proctor back in the boat but if, it, it fills a huge need for them and then like david expressed earlier huge blow for iowa um and i think for kirk ferentz it's not an identity crisis but it's a huge fork in the road about how you want to proceed going forward because this is certainly a uh, sticking point i think in college football but iowa uh certainly as well Guys, we appreciate you uh, tuning in to the 24-7 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast. You can find us every Tuesday and Wednesday at 11 o'clock Central Time, noon Eastern as well. We will be on X. If you're watching us on X, guys, we appreciate you. You can get active in the chat. That is the place to do it. Also, if you have questions, make sure to head over to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel to like and subscribe. That helps us a lot, the Oyster Boys over here. All three of us, we are forever grateful. <laughs>